Good morning, you guys. Welcome to my Sunday reset routine. On Sundays, I don't make myself follow any sort of routine. I let myself sleep in and get up at whatever time my body wakes me up at, which is usually at about 8 or 9 a.m., depending on what time I went to bed the night before. But I always like starting the day off with making my bed and heading downstairs and making a coffee right away or eating a little something, just depending on my mood that morning. But I really like to have a slow sunday and just do whatever i want i don't force myself to do any health or self-care habits and i love right away going downstairs putting on netflix scrolling on my phone and just drinking my coffee and chilling for a bit I love hopping in the shower and doing my skincare. Full body showers on Sunday morning just hit different and it just puts me in a relaxation mode for the rest of the day. So this is a non-negotiable for my Sunday morning. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy following me along on this Sunday. So I just kind of got dressed and got myself ready a bit. I'm just gonna touch up my hair right now with my Dyson. So all I do is I put some heat protectant in it just to make it a little bit wet and you're supposed to use heat protectant every single time you like put heat on your hair. I try to be good with my heat protectant because I feel like I get split ends so easily, it's crazy. But all that I do is take a section of hair, my Dyson, under, and just kind of let it sit for a minute. And then it kind of just curls the ends of it and that's all i do to touch my hair up because my hair falls so easily because i don't really like using hairspray and that is it then it turns out really nice and it lasts at least the whole day but then once i sleep on it honestly i wake up and it's gone but doing this every day is so low maintenance and as long as you use a heat protectant it's fine so but yeah i just wanted to touch out my hair a bit before starting my reset so I think I'm going to start this reset kind of in my closet, organizing and pulling things that I don't want anymore and just kind of going through my drawers, seeing what I want, what I don't want and also reorganizing everything. I kind of started this yesterday and I was organizing a little bit of my leggings drawer and I got rid of some leggings, which is nice. So I kind of want to do that to all my other drawers now. I feel like it's so easy to just let your things accumulate and let them sit in your drawers without even noticing they're there. And then you're buying new clothes, you're piling them on top and then it gets messy and then you're running out of space. I just feel like I have so many things that I keep for no reason and that like I want to get rid of. I'm going to do like a huge deep clean for the new year. So I'm going to save the nitty gritty for that. But I still do have just a couple things that I want to organize right now and just like make more clean and i feel like i just need a bit of an energy refresh with my space right now i also want to refold all my sweatsuits up here because they're getting kind of messy and just like miscellaneous so let's get started with some organizing <laughs> So these are the leggings that I did yesterday and I kind of switched up how I organize them. I used to just color coordinate them, but now I sort them based off of their material. So over here, we got super soft leggings that I like wearing to yoga class, oxygen yoga and fitness, and they're just the Ritzia butter material, similar to Lululemon Align. And I got all these leggings here that are that material. These leggings are, I don't even know how to describe their material. They're more workout-y material where they feel more spandexy versus these ones are just super butter soft. But I also like wearing these as well, more for like the gym. And then these ones over here are my least favorite type of material and they're more like the gritty gym material. I'm actually debating just throwing them all out because I really don't like this material after wearing the softer stuff. I tend to never wear these anymore. I got them so long ago, so I'm debating throwing them out. Might do that soon, but I'm just gonna hold on to them for now just in case. I just don't like the way this feels on me. It's not that comfortable, so it's just nice having all my leggings sorted by material now instead of just color, so then I know where to go. It's more directional. 
and I also just did the same thing for my sports bras. These ones, or I did it more for style rather than material, but these ones are sportswear tops, so they come down. They're not sports bras. This row is sports bras. This row is biker shorts, and then this row is bodysuits. It's way more organized like this instead of just by color. I know it doesn't look as aesthetically pleasing as if it were to all just be like sort of color-wise, but it is way more functional, and I feel like I can keep it clean more this way. Now, when I'm looking, I know if I want a workout top, sports bra, shorts, or jumpsuit, and I know where to look. So it's a lot more nicely organized, so I'm really happy. I just organized this drawer. These are just my sweatpants and I did darkest to lightest. I did have my yoga pants in here, but I decided to relocate them just so this drawer can be more organized and just be sweatpants. Yeah, it feels so good to just have it all folded again. So now for my dresser, I have these drawers where I just kind of let get out of hand and they're really unorganized. So I'm just going to look through them and reorganize everything and just make it look all nice because it's become kind of a mess. organize them they look so much better and just so much more clean because i was just kind of shoving them up there before so it's nice to have this closet space now nice and refreshed so here in this closet in my bedroom i just have a bunch of random things that i piled on the floor here so i'm just going to get this a little bit cleaned up and more organized and then potentially look through some sweaters or whatever that i don't want anymore <laughs> looks so much better because when i do laundry i get lazy and i just like pile the things that i need to hang up on the floor and then i just leave it but i should just start doing that right away because it feels so much better when it's nice and clean now we're gonna close that so now i'm pretty much finished cleaning the upstairs i organized my room a little bit clean the closet here and stuff so i think i'm just gonna do a load of laundry and then head downstairs and kind of do some cleaning in the kitchen and just kind of wipe everything down so let's put a load of laundry in and then we can head downstairs and do some cleaning I'm just realizing now is I need desperately not desperately but I need new makeup brushes I just recently bought this one from real techniques which is their 200 brush and I love it so much this is what I use to blend my concealer with but this is my only fairly new brush that I have all of my other brushes I've had since like 2013 and they're actually disgusting actually these I have two elf ones I got them actually not that long ago that was a total lie I have two elf ones, but I don't like them because they started shedding on me. Literally hair comes out of them. Like, look, I don't know if you can even see that, but every time I use them, I get hairs on my face. So I can't even use them. And that's why I bought this one. And it's been so good to me recently. So I'm going to actually ask for makeup brushes for Christmas from my mom or somebody because people keep asking what I want. And I'm like, I don't know. I, like, I don't have anything in mind. But now that I look at the state of my makeup brushes, 
I can use a nice new clean set. I don't know what I'm going to go for yet, but I have never invested in makeup brushes and I feel like that's something that I definitely should because they can last me such a long time if I take good care of them and that'll motivate me to wash them more because I haven't washed my brushes in like a few months, which is so disgusting. Ew. And I'm using them on my face. Imagine the amount of bacteria that are on them right now. But yeah, these are the ones that I have from e.l.f. which lasted me about maybe two months and i don't know if you could tell but there's hair coming out of them so i've been still using this contour brush because i don't want to use this one because i use this for my concealer this one has been better than this one this one's just been shedding like crazy this is their ultimate blending brush and then this one i don't even know it doesn't have a name but i think it's their contour no it's not even their contour brush i don't know but it's it's a different one and i would not recommend because they only last me two months and i do like the brush itself but not the fact that it's shedding so i know real techniques is like a tried and true really good brand yeah and then this random makeup brush that i have that i use for my powder sometimes i've had this since 2013 i swear and then this little one which is breaking apart only other two that i have is this merit beauty one which is actually a really good brush and then this other real techniques one this is they're called their blush brush which i actually really like and it has been so good i've had this one for i want to say since 2013 as well and it hasn't shed it's so good so that's why i bought this one because real techniques is actually really good but anyways my makeup brushes are so old and so gross and i need to wash them at least but i'm definitely going to be asking for some new ones for christmas because that's just like a perfect gift and since i've never really i don't know why i've never thought of buying myself makeup brushes before but that would be a perfect gift idea and if you guys want makeup brushes and you don't want to ask for christmas i would would definitely recommend that because i just thought of that idea and my makeup brushes are disgusting so let's at least wash them and i feel like it's a good habit to start implementing to wash them every single week i know so much bacteria is on them and if i can get up to the habit of washing them every single sunday that would be so good because it's so easy and you can just watch a podcast or listen to a youtube video while doing it i just can't believe i let them go this far i mean it's because they're pretty bad quality anyways so i guess i wasn't really motivated to wash them in the first place but i should be washing them more often so that's an habit that i'm going to be implementing especially when i get new makeup brushes is washing them once a week and i've stopped really using beauty blenders altogether because i've heard really scary things about bacteria and stuff that can get inside of them so i got scared about using beauty blenders but makeup brushes are a lot safer but as long as you wash them which i don't so let's wash these because that is so disgusting and i can't wait to get new ones and i'm just gonna throw these out except for this one i'm gonna keep this one and then also this one my merit one and these are the only two ones that are staying in my collection but let me know if you guys have any good makeup brush set makeup brush recommendations leave them down below because then i can put them on my wish list so for the makeup brush washer <laughs> mixture what i'm gonna do is this is what i do every single time is i just put some dish soap where am i supposed to put hand soap now i forget because it's been so long okay yeah so you just add some dish soap and just kind of eyeball the ratio and then really random but you just add olive oil to it just to make it more i guess creamy and smooth for the brushes that is about it that's what i do for my little mixture i know you can actually buy brush cleaner which i probably will once i get like better brushes but for now this does the job and i've done this for years now every time i clean them so it works but this is my little mixture and i have all my little brushes here so let's clean them that just happen i just um oh my um <laughs> jail jail time what is this <laughs> Hold on. this is going to the garbage like what in the world this just goes to prove that this brush is from 2013 you guys i was not even kidding you <gasps> okay well <laughs> r.i.p to this brush i actually <laughs> This is so funny. Ew, what the hell? Oh, well, anyways, <laughs> hopefully that doesn't happen again. Here's the makeup brushes, all nice and clean. Half of these are gonna be thrown out once I get new ones, so don't mind the miscellaneous. I swear, you guys, I got this one from Shein. Like, who buys 
makeup brushes off Shein. I got it like 15 years ago though and it's still with me to this day. This one, I think I got it in like a stocking stuffer probably like 8 years ago. This one was a gift another 8 years ago. So this is a, a vintage makeup brush collection by the way. It could be worth a lot of money in the future. <laughs> Wait, I'm so happy they're clean. This was long overdue. So I'm just gonna leave them dry here and then they'll be ready to use tomorrow. So I'm just about to log on to take my language course with Langoda. They are the number one online trusted language school and I love them so much. So I'm currently doing Spanish with them. The reason why I love their classes so much is because they do them online over Zoom with only three to five students. So I feel like I'm so immersed and I just really love how their classes are so flexible. They take place 24-7 so it can work within your schedule. Angoda has their last sprint challenge of the year coming up. So the sprints are two-month learning challenges where you take either 30 or 60 lessons very intensively. That way you can see huge progress so fast and it keeps you so motivated. These classes are going to start on December 27th. So it's the perfect challenge to end off your year. Best thing about these sprint challenges is they have rewards to them so it really incentivizes you if you complete the sprint challenge you get 50 percent cash back or 30 to 60 credits since i've not been in school i've really missed the opportunity to learn and i find it so motivating to do their classes since i can do them from my couch in the comfort of my own home while it still feels so immersed join the lingoda sprint challenge to stay motivated and committed to your goals click the link in my description and i actually have a coupon code for you guys which is bento20 for 25 dollars usd off sign up with the link in my description i'm actually going to do my class right now so me and joel just got back from our walk I love going on a walk as part of the reset routine. Even though it's cold outside, it's really nice to get fresh air. Every single day we try to go on a walk and just, you know, rejuvenate. And also it's a full moon today. So it was nice to just like be out in nature and soak that in. But right now I'm gonna start making dinner because it's already five o'clock. The day goes by so fast and it gets dark so early. So it just feels even shorter. But I'm just gonna make some tomato soup now because I have the ingredients for it. I have a bunch of tomatoes. So um, I haven't made tomato soup since like a month ago now, I think it's been. And I've been in my soup era and it was just so good and healthy. So I'm gonna make some tomato soup. It mostly just has to cook in the oven. It's pretty easy. So I'll show you guys how I make it. But I'm gonna do that and then just clean up the kitchen kitchen a little bit and then we're basically done for the cleaning and then i'm just gonna go on the couch and kind of just like plan for the week make my schedule and all that and just relax for the evening maybe make it tea or something so yeah that's the vibe for the rest of the night um but i'm just gonna start on dinner and cleaning the kitchen and the soup now so let's do that the tomato soup prep i just did a bunch of tomatoes with two like one and a half onion and then almost a full thing of garlic so i did like maybe five big huge cloves and i just seasoned it and now i'm just going to pop this in the oven for about an hour at 400 degrees and let it roast and then we just have to transfer to a blender and add chicken broth and that's basically it it's so easy so i'm just going to pop this in the oven right now it just came out of the oven, so now what I'm gonna do is transfer the tomatoes and everything on the pan into my blender. This is the type of blender that can do a hot thing, so it has a soup setting. So make sure that you're putting it in a blender that can do that, or you can use a hand blender. But I'm just gonna transfer everything over into here. <laughs> It 
And now I'm just gonna fill it up with chicken broth. Just enough to, oops, just enough to kind of blend it up. And then now we're gonna mix it. Soup is just heating up because I transferred it from the blender to a saucepan. And then I just added a bit of ch more chicken broth and just like more salt um, because you have to taste it after you blend it and then you can add whatever, but it turned out so good. And I'm just toasting a gluten-free bagel right now to eat with it, but I'm pouring some kombucha in a wine glass. Kombucha in a wine glass hits different. This is what I would assume people like drinking wine for. I'm not a big wine girly, but I am a big kombucha girly. And in a wine glass, you guys, it hits different. Like it makes me feel some type of way. With dinner to relax, it just does wonders. I love it so much. And this is the kombucha raspberry lemonade. This is one of my favorite flavors from this brand. And cheers to that. So excited to eat this soup. All right, you guys, here is the final dinner. Got our tomato soup with our gluten-free bagel with it. It looks so good. I'm so excited to eat this. So I just finished dinner. It was so good. Oh my gosh. Literally amazing and so healthy. Now I'm just satted. Satted? Did I just say satted? Seated. I'm seated here right now on the couch. And I'm just going to put on maybe a Christmas movie, actually, or a show or something. Maybe Love Island, maybe The Golden Bachelor. I don't know. I'm kind of watching a lot right now. But anyways, I'm going to put on something and I'm just going to plan my content out for the week. And also what I like doing is making a to-do list for every single day of the week so I know what I'm doing. And I've started actually doing that on my phone in my notes app. So I have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday written out. And then under each one, I have checkboxes because you know how in the notes app you can make like the checkboxes. So that's what I do. And then I make my to-do list for the week in according to my content calendar. So I kind of lay out on my notion on my laptop what I have to do every single day this week for my content, when I need to film, when I need to edit. And I lay that out on my notion and see what I have to do for the week with brands and everything. And then after I have that planned out for the week, my video ideas and whatever it is, then that is when I pick up my phone and I make my to-do list because I had a, an agenda. I wrote down my to-do list manually, but nothing honestly beats the notes app on my phone because I feel like I use it so much more frequently because I can have it when I'm out of the house as well. And on your phone, it's just so easy and so practical. Yeah, that's like my tip of the day is make your to-do list on your notes app because trust me, I know it's satisfying to manually check it off, but on your phone, I just use it so much more and always refer back to it. It's just kind of like a guide for each day, a rough guide. Obviously things can change depending on like what happens that day and whatever, but it's kind of like a rough sketch of what my week is gonna look like. And I really like having that rubric so then I don't feel completely lost every day and not knowing what to do since I work for myself it's really important that I give myself like a rough schedule to work around and then things are gonna happen things are gonna change a bit but that's okay as long as I know what I need to get done and I kind of divide it up and then just go from there so that is what I do every single Sunday it honestly takes me an hour or two to do that just because I really like to think and be creative with my concept my video ideas and like what I'm gonna film that week and I'm also trying to content plan right now for the whole month of december and starting to think about my videos in january so i'm gonna think about that as well this is what i do every sunday is plan my week out so yeah let's put a show on or something and get planning so one more thing if i ever need like inspiration for the week i go on pinterest and i just will scroll on pinterest on a sunday or i'll just watch creators that inspire me or something like that just like feed myself with inspiration that's what i like to do on a sunday especially because I like to somewhat not make my content so repetitive and the same every single week. So scrolling on Pinterest, looking at new kind of ideas and watching other creators really does inspire me. And I feel like it's really, really important to motivate yourself on a Sunday. It'll make you dread the week less and think of something new to do. Think of something that you can integrate into your week to kind of make things a little bit nicer for yourself and romanticize life a little bit more and switch something around because I feel like if you do the same thing exact same thing every single week and every single day it's going to get a bit boring and then you're not going to really look forward to your weeks but i know there's such thing as a sunday scaries so to avoid those like motivate yourself for the week that's why i like making monday motivation videos weekly motivation videos because i know that so many people get the sunday scary so i just for me personally it's really important that i surround myself with inspiration and motivation on a sunday night so i can really just be excited for the week ahead and yeah anyways okay
finished everything for the evening and i'm going to get ready for bed now i need to get in bed early on a sunday night because i need to have that time just to read recharge scroll on pinterest just get myself motivated and stuff like i was just talking about for the week so i make sure to give myself a long time in bed on sunday so that means getting to bed and in bed in between like 7 30 to 8 and then i don't go to sleep until 9 9 30 and i do try to do this on weekdays too but sundays is like a priority like we need to get ourselves to bed early so that we just have so much time to relax because i hate going to bed and feeling super rushed like i have to fall asleep right away i need to make sure to get eight hours of sleep every night so i want to make sure that i'm having like a good sleep anyways yeah so i'm just gonna do my skincare routine and then head to bed to relax but i honestly haven't really been into doing like face masks that often lately i used to do them once in a while but honestly i just have been keeping up with like a good everyday skincare routine and i don't really feel the need to do like a face mask but i did take like a nice everything shower this morning so that was so nice i love self tanning on saturday night and then showering it off and sometimes i'll wash my hair sunday too it just depends when i wash my hair that week but a lot of the times i'll do a hair mask on my roots with castor oil and rosemary essential oil and then i will self tan and then let that sit for the night and then in the morning wake up and shower that off and i just feel so amazing and good after showering it off like i feel reborn it's the best feeling on a sunday morning